over there yeah, man. doing her thing. You're listening to the Uncensored Truth Podcast with your brother, Old God, in Sam Ant. Man, this was a good, good one, man. Um, we ain't done yet, though. We want to um, talk about uh, our sister over there, Jennifer Lewis, you know, who's on the Breakfast Club. This has kind of been overlooked. I'm surprised this really didn't make more headlines when I got a chance to listen to it in our pre-production. I was, you know, really, you know, enamored, you know, by what I heard. But uh, I'm going to turn it over to Sam, man. He has that story up. Let him do his one-two on it. Shout out to Jennifer Lewis on the Breakfast Club. Shout out to the Breakfast Club. Y'all put in work this week. I had Jim Jones over there, Jennifer Lewis, a number of other dope celebrities. Great interviews over there. Mm -hmm. Shout out. Jennifer Lewis. Now, we all know her. She's the mother of black Hollywood. She's been in all of your iconic black movies the brothers you know what i mean um i don't know if she was in the best man she probably was in there she's been kevin hart's mama mm -hmm. she's been all your black favorite movie mamas you know what i mean she we all know her jennifer lewis the, the legendary and beautiful jennifer lewis she went on the breakfast club and i'm going to say i'm going to put it out there she probably gave one of the top three greatest interview breakfast club interviews of all time mm -hmm. i put it on by accident just kind of hearing tips and snippets of it and it gave my attention and i'm telling you from top to finish it's an hour and three minutes it gained my ultimate attention. She had me glocked from day one or from minute one, excuse me. Mm -hmm. And she wrote a book. She sold me on a book. I went and bought the book. I can't wait for that to come in so I can read that. She is um, bipolar. She suffered from mental illness. She dives into that. She dives into her sexual addiction. She dives into how it what it took for her to kind of just keep the dream going and being in the successful person that she is, being her own boss. This and alpha interview was unbelievable. I say all of this to begin it because what I'm about to play was her talking about Bill Cosby. And I don't want to take away just by the last five minutes, because it was at the last about the 56 minute mark of the um the interview. So you had an hour just worth of great content. Please go back and listen to that because this isn't the whole premise of the reason why she was there. But she went in on Bill Cosby and she said some pretty crazy shit. I'm going to play what she said and we'll get to our one, two. Let's go. You can get into. She worked, so much. He was on Bill Cosby show. You don't want me to go in on Bill. Did you did you did you see anything back? Anything then? Yes, sir, I saw some suspicious shit. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. What you see? All right. You want the story? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'll give you the story I told you, honey. You ain't come to play? I ain't scared of none of this. Well, don't ask me what room I was in. I think I was auditioning for something. I don't know what it was, but I was here in New York, and there was a young girl in there. I'm going to start again. I need to. You tell you from the hood. Yeah, yeah. Don't play that <laughs> shit. Get that shit out of me. <laughs> I got a show tomorrow night. I'm sold out up at a little club called The Triad hey. on 72nd Street. I'm excited because it's for the gypsies, the Broadway gypsies. All right, what I'm story. Bill Cosby was about to yeah. rape somebody. <laughs> that's, all, that's cold blood. <laughs> so, I'm in a room with this girl. She's got red hair and she's thin. I hope she's watching because I don't know who she was or what, but we were in that room. And I was going on and on about myself. What else? <laughs> talking, 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 what I'm doing. And I said, we were having a good time, me and this girl. We're just talking. And I looked out, I remember looking out the window at the Hudson River. I remember it like it was yesterday. I'm talking out. And I said, and next week I'm doing the Cosby show. And she, I didn't hear her say nothing because we've been laughing and everything. So I turned around. And when I tell you this girl turned red, she's like, I turned around and her whole shit had changed, mm -hmm. had reversed in a second, just from hearing his name. I said, what's wrong with you? He raped me. You know, back in those days, we revered Cosby, and she was a pretty little thing, so I, I thought in my head, oh, girl, she done gone up, you know, auditioned and slept with him. You know, you know how we used to yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. She mad. We didn't think nothing yeah. of it. She mm -hmm. mad because she didn't get the job or, you know. Well, oops. Mm. Right. And here now, these many years later, I mean, let me tell you something. There's some shit you can't fake. Mm. Now, why would this child roll up and say some shit like that to me? Right. What year was it? Mm, I think it was 90, 
before I did the car. You can look on IBM and see when I did the Cosby show. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that happened. Wow. And once again, he didn't come for me. But he did when I went to his dressing room after the show. Uh, I had a, a girlfriend with me, and he patted, uh, slapped her ass when we left the room. Mm-hmm. Didn't she, even know her. Cause when she, no, he didn't know her. She um, told me when we stepped outside of the door, she said, he hit me on my ass. I went, mm-hmm. you know, we were just kids. Right. Yes. Wow. I, I know. That's all I'm going to say about that man, because once again, y'all, <sighs> compassion. God damn. Now, mm-hmm. now, you know who she reminded me of? I'm not going to lie, man. She reminded me of Aunt Esther. You know, she oh, just yeah, had that yeah, real yeah. eclectic kind of personality. <laughs> right. When she spoke, you listen, you know what I mean? Look at me, look at me. And it was dope. Like, you you get so drawn into what she's saying. She That lady wasn't lying. You don't think so? Nah. Look at her in her face. Nah, I mean, I, 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 that lady wasn't lying. That's crazy. She, yeah. Like I said, listen to the entire interview before you go in and listen to what she said at the end, because this is no premise on what she said throughout her entire interview. It was a powerful interview. Listen to this woman. I learned something new. Like I said, I went and bought her book. Let me get the title of her book out right here, right now, if I can get it up. But within, within talking, it was just, she, it's, it's a book on her memoirs, on her life. She's real powerful. So she's pretty much saying that. Go ahead. Bill Cosby pretty much, you know, this lady pretty much came, you know, and said that Bill Cosby. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, did that's did. Wow. Did wow. what he did. And she said it right there. She said that was a story that she heard from from a young woman. We all know the allegations that came out. Now, what I will say about Bill Cosby, because we have been real critical here on the Uncensored Truth Podcast, but what I did put up, I don't know if it was noted, the Harvey Weinsteins of the world, the other, the other animalistic motherfuckers that have been caught in Hollywood for doing some dog shit, better get the same result as Bill Cosby, he better be one in the domino effect in Hollywood. And this better not be a situation that a lot of people in the comment section, I'm not gonna say it here, unless you wanna go ahead and bust it out. Uh-huh. You feel me? But a lot of people in the comment section are alluding to that he's being blackballed, that this is a situation that happens to a lot of our entertainers. Remains to be seen. If we don't see the same thing happen to the Weinsteins of the world and the the, the other animals, I don't even know their motherfucking names, piece of shit. If they don't get the same result or worse, Man. So after seeing this interview, do you think that Bill Cosby did all of the stuff? Because you, I mean, you obviously made some type of connection. You bought a book. You want to know more about it. So, you know, are you saying right now that you think that Bill Cosby, you know, the one that we used to watch in here, you know, we watched the reruns at one o'clock in the summer. You know what I mean? You saying that he now is guilty that he actually, you know, did, you know, and break these women, date rape of Mark. You know? All of all of the things, no, but some of the things. Man, maybe. I mean, one, it only take you one time to be a thief. I mean, if somebody raped you once, you, you know, you're man. a rapist. Some things, and then it's, you it's, said a you great know? thing because my man right. DL Hughley a couple years ago he said something that's funny as hell, but it makes so much sense. A lot of us, Heathcliff Huxtable, is innocent. He always will and always forever will be the greatest. You know what I mean? At home black dad of all time. We all know he's the godfather of that. Bill Cosby fucking shout out to women. <laughs> DL Hughley said it, not me. And it was funny because I remember listening to an interview with Debbie Allen. Shout out to Debbie Allen, the iconic Debbie Allen. That is the sister to Felicia Rashad, who played, and, you know what I mean, yeah. Mother Huxtable mm. on the Cosby show. Shout out to Mother Huxtable. You feel me? So she has some saying. She was also a co-producer on A Different World with Bill Cosby. She went on to say when our uh, sister Lisa Bonet, who played Denise mm. on the Cosby show, you heard what I said, Denise on the Cosby show, when she got pregnant, on a different world. Now, um, Debbie Allen wanted to kind of highlight that. You know what I mean? You have a young woman who's pregnant, a black woman. We're going to watch her grow and watch her mature and watch her take care of business. Mm-hmm. Bill Cosby said, Lisa Bonet is pregnant. Denise Huxtable is not. Mm. So he automatically just had that correlation where he wanted to absolutely separate Cosby's world and your world. Mm-hmm. He wanted that ultimate control. So it's just funny now that I say he's Cliff Huxtable and Bill Cosby live two totally separate lives. But you say that, though. It's funny that you say that. And you mentioned Felicia Vashad. Mm-hmm. If, if you don't recall, Felicia Vashad to this day has defended Bill Cosby. As, so as she should, if she seen nothing and she didn't do anything, if she if she never seen him do anything wrong, if she never had anything done to her, if she never seen anything then she shouldn't. Now, we're, we're, I mean, it would be no, it's, just, it's, it's, it's more of a, she's talking about more so he ain't do nothing. Like his character, like this is a, the, the way she's making it seem like it's less about, it's more about destroying his image more than anything. What do you think? What do I think? Mm-hmm. I, I really, honestly, I really don't know. I really don't. 
What, you, you know, I know what you hope for. I hope for the same thing. Yeah, I really don't. I, I I, I'm, a, I'm keeping it a buck. I really don't know what happened. You know what I mean? I, I don't really believe a lot of it, dog. I really don't. Mm. I don't believe a lot of it. I think a lot of it's made up. You know, um, mm. you know, I just that's just what that's what I believe more so than he did it. I'm gonna keep it a buck. Why is that though? Based off of evidence, based off of him saying he did drug just the women, be- or just based off of Heathcliff Huxtable? Like, can you get off of that? You know, because I, I like I mm-hmm. said, that's my we grew up in the same house. We are though, bro. Right, but I mean, are you doing that strictly off of facts or, or from an objective perspective, or just from the love? Of My Bill thing Cosby? is just like, like you said, like we always say before, like why would you have to mm-hmm. if you're Bill Cosby? Agree. You're gonna have every type of woman, no matter the color. You mm-hmm. probably gonna have more white than black at this point, because that's what you're probably gonna be around with the type of money that you got. Right, it is what it is. So I don't think that he would have to. Mm-hmm. That's just my opinion, but I, you know. I don't know. He that was, deposition kind of it, it kind of killed it when he, you know, on an old deposition where he kind of admitted, you know, what I mean, that he dabbled in, you know, the pills and stuff like that. That's and, my end all right. to it. I don't think it. Yeah. Any, I don't think anybody knows, and whether or not we know or not, it, it, it doesn't matter at the end of the day whether he did it or not. And I don't want to say that to be insensitive to any of the women because if he did do it, he's getting what he deserves. We obviously see. My whole argument throughout the whole thing before hearing what I heard was, why wait so long? You know what I mean? This yeah. happened so Real long time. ago. Why wait till this man is damn near in his grave to go ahead and make these things and destroy a man's legacy? Why not take that right there on the head, right then and there? If it, if it was as many people as they said, why not one come out and make accusation and say something? Now, were things said and ignored? If things were said and ignored, then L, uh, Sandusky and Paterno got put down. We need to hear about everyone that ignored those things and those those outrages. If things were said early on and people didn't hear about it, we need to know. But why was it so long? But once he said, yeah, I did it, I'm like, Bill, like, where's your legal team? Where's... It's almost like, okay, in a situation where I don't want to believe it, but I have to be objective in this platform, damn, Bill, you told me yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's when I seen that. It was just like, it was like, dang. Then you got the drawer that said, look, this would, you know, the conviction, the, the main reason why we, you know, found him guilty is because of this deposition where he said that he gave these women these quaaludes. That's what that means. So, it's, you know. They have no other proof but what he just said. If he said no. I ain't do it. Nope. He'd probably be a free man today. How would they prove it? They couldn't prove it. They couldn't prove it. Nope. And mm. we would be having a t- an entirely different conversation because we, having the love for Bill Cosby and Heathcliff Huxable that we have, if he was innocent, none of us would be talking like this right now. He Not did it to himself. I don't know if it was karma. I don't know if it was energy that forced it out of his mouth. I don't know if it was poor legal advice. I don't know if it was just an old man just coming to his truth. I don't know. Now, is his legacy ruined for good? You think it's done? It's over with? Facts. Not, I mean, not in a lot of eyes. In many eyes, it's not. In many eyes, he'll always be Heathcliff Huxtable. He'll always be the person out there that was iconic for what he did. Right. Always. And you and I heard a lot of people in the comment section saying his show is still on TV One. I highly doubt that. Oh. But it, I mean, I haven't checked for it in a while. So maybe it right. is. Y'all let me know if it's still, if that's valid. I've seen somebody in the comment section. Shout out to whoever you are. Say it was still on TV One. Right. Not sure. But I think that in, 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 the, in the eyes of many, that it is. And I, it's just a shame. It is a shame, man. Yes, sir. But you're listening to the Uncensored Truth Podcast with Old God and Sam. And it's been a beautiful, beautiful show, to say the least, family. You can always check us out, you know, uh, Mondays and Thursdays at 7 p.m. We got some dope interviews coming up. We got to bring some guests, you know, um, and on the hot seat. That's what we call it. That goes all the way back. But we're going to take that name, you know. The hot seat is going to be here real. So not that we're going to be coming at people, but it's going to be real and uncensored when we bring the guests on the show. So I'm excited about that, Amen. you know, coming, um, you know, real soon. Let me give a quick shout out to uh, Rattel SEO and Darren's Coffee. Shout out to you, brother. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, that's all I got over here, Sam. Shout out to 120, my brothers, Nico and Baby Boy. We got a show tonight at Voltage Lounge in Philadelphia. Make sure if y'all in the area, go check that out. We should go over there and do our thing. Should be a good time. Shout out to my brother, Angel, my sister, Vanessa, 710 Eastland, Desav, and Violent. Y'all seen us at the podcast last week. Had a real dope yes. show over there. Great build. Beautiful. Looking for the grand opening to go down. They had a little bit of a setback or two, but they are looking to open within the next couple of weeks or so. And we will come back and do a lot of dope work over there once they are open and running and going smooth. Shout out to you guys over there at One Love Tattoo over in East Violent. Yes. Land of Sav, man. That's all I got. Yes, sir. Well, we're out of here today, family. Y'all have a great, great day. Peace. Peace.